This is my story. The sad part of our life isn't all of the bad stuff that happens to us. The saddest part of our life is all of the good stuff that we don't say yes to. And when I say stuff, I don't mean just stuff. I'm talking about things like grace and mercy and healing. Our life is only really tragic if we don't say yes to those things. That's the sad part. I grew up in a very large, very Catholic, very happy, slightly crazy family. I'm the second oldest. I have four brothers and three sisters. And I have to say that when I entered into my teens, I was really becoming what I would call a hardcore romantic. I loved all of the Ellen Montgomery and Louisa May Alcott books, Little Women, Anne of Green Gables. I watched the 1950s classic movies with the traditional Hollywood love scenes. And I was convinced that somewhere out there was my Gilbert Blythe or my Mr. Darcy. We would meet, fall in love, get married, and live happily ever after. In my mind, the life that I was living, the beautiful family life I had in my immediate family was going to be followed by the family life I was going to build with my future husband, whoever he was. However, things began to change very drastically in the next couple of years. I did have tragedies in my life, and as I was thinking about my story, I looked at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, where people come and tell Jesus about some Galileans who had their blood mixed with pagan sacrifice. Nothing like that happened in my family, and it's not those sad things. It's the opportunities that I had to either say no or say yes to the graces that God was giving me. Those are the things that I want to focus on. So back to my story. I mentioned that there were tragedies, and the first tragedy was actually the death of my father at age 39. He had cancer, and he was only um, a year and a half from the time that he was diagnosed to the time he passed away. And he left my mom with the eight of us. My youngest brother was only 15 months old, and it was just three weeks before my sweet 16th birthday, which, as you can imagine, was anything but sweet. Life had been difficult during his illness, but my world completely turned upside down at his death. I don't think children ever really adapt to life without one of their parents. You learn to get along with it, you learn to make the best of it, and in my family we had begun to do that. We moved to a new town, so we had a new house, new school, and it should have been a new start. But again, there was tragedy. Um, less than a year after we moved into that new house, we had a horrible house fire, and it left us essentially homeless for three months. Now, we didn't go out and live on the streets, but we were moving from one family's home to friends, to relatives, in and out of different hotels. We didn't have any of our material things, and it was a really difficult time. During those three months, I went on a trip to Italy, and I was really more concerned with my fashion and my social calendar than anything else at the time. I wasn't really religiously minded at all during the trip. Um, but there was this one night, and it was almost like something out of a Jane Austen book. Um, we were there in Rome. We were in St. Peter's, the piazza outside St. Peter's. It was 10 o'clock at night. The bell started to chime, the moon was rising over St. Peter's, and all of a sudden, it was as if Prince Charming got down on one knee in front of me and proposed marriage, only it was Jesus. All of a sudden, I knew in my heart that I was called to be the bride of Christ. My response to Christ's invitation was actually a long time in coming. It was clear in my heart this is what God wanted me to do, but it really wasn't what I wanted. I did meet the Carmelite sisters, and as you can see, I became a Carmelite, but it was actually about a year and a half in after I'd entered the convent that I came to a point where I realized I was free. I could say yes to what God was inviting me to, or I could say no, and He would let me go. But I realized deep down in my heart, I wanted to say yes. I could see the different tragedies that had happened in my life and realize they wouldn't be nearly as sad as if I turned down the gift that he was offering me. 
So here I am, 16 years later, a Carmelite sister and very, very happy. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of you are being asked to be Carmelite sisters, but what I have come to realize is that happy ever after is a day-to-day -day affair. It's something that I have to choose every day. Am I going to choose the happiness that our Lord is offering me, or am I going to just get stuck in the sad things and my life really becomes a tragedy? So I encourage you today to look at it. What is Jesus offering you? What are the blessings? What are the graces? Where's the healing that he's offering to you? And I encourage you to say yes with all your heart.